सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम सो आई थिंक वी कैन डिस्कस व्हाट वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट फॉर द लास्ट वन मंथ और लिटिल मोर देन दैट अबाउट observing the self by the self and we have been through all the um steps one by one even in our traditional texts and through so many ways many people in the past have tried to see this reality the way that it is without you know trying to see it through their own perception but rather seeing it the way it actually is really so for this many efforts have been made in the past and with these efforts you will find there have been many 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 methods by which people have been able to do this right one of those methods or several of those methods may be something that we have read about or something that we have practiced or something that we have heard through media or through other places ultimately the talk is about the process isn't it how we go about it because if you look at the reality the reality is the same it's just that we may approach it by various methods isn't it so we are also saying that this is one method one method of trying to see the reality the way it is that seeing the reality the way it is understanding every aspect of that reality that is right understanding so many 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 fine things will be there based on which we can uh you know um once we see the whole picture then we can see the placement of that right now because we have not seen the whole picture because we are exploring and we keep you know these days there is a bombardment through the media of you know uh, all kinds of things through whatsapp through facebook instagram so many things youtube so there is lot of information but important to see is that this seeing the reality is not something that one can do overnight or with one class or with you know even a few weeks of training it is something more significant than that seeing the whole reality in bits and pieces people do uh, profess to have this knowledge but there also you will see that if it is the truth to be able to see it it is not something that you can just do you know quickly even the so called masters or you know the truly enlightened people also who have actually seen the truth for them also it is a lifetimes work it is not something that can happen very quickly certainly we can make the effort but if we do that and if we channel our or focus our um whole attention on a particular process and give it you know pay attention to that with commitment then we will see the progress slowly and eventually one can 
be able to see the reality. However, if we go through, you know, various different processes, there may be many methods. So if we keep shifting from one method to the other, then it becomes very difficult to focus on the actual process of paying attention. So the process of paying attention can be going from the gross to the subtle in most cases. You will see that many people have um, are not able to focus on things. The attention keeps shifting, diverting, here, there, restless. So to bring it into some sort of method to be a little calm, to be able to focus on something may require effort and time on the part of the person. So that process may involve you know, sitting down in one place, closing eyes, trying to focus on first it may be something outside, then it may be closing the eyes and focusing on the inside and so on. And one of those methods is going through the senses, through the body. Right now we are going through in this exercise one, we are observing the self by the self. So if you are observing the body, say, or if you are observing the outside, then you will pay attention there, or you will pay attention to the body. Supposing you are paying attention to the body. If you are paying attention to the outside, through the body, then we may be using the sense organs in the body. So sitting down, focusing, seeing some light, you know, like a candle or something, seeing that flame, trying to keep your attention on that. It may start with that. Or it may be focusing on the breath, feeling the breath, you know, under the nose. It may be with that. Or it may be hearing something through the ears and so on. Then when we go from the outside to the body, then you can focus on what may be going on in the body. And you will find that there are many activities that go on in the body and we don't pay attention, but there may be many sounds in the body if we pay attention to that. So all this will take time. It will not happen overnight. But if you pay attention to those sounds, then you may be able to hear subtler and subtler sounds as you pay attention. So the whole thing is about paying attention. The process is to pay attention. So how much time you think you have to pay attention to these various things. According to that, we, you know, set priorities. And in order to be able to get something substantial, to make that effort, to pay attention, then we may have to decide what exactly it is I want to pay attention to. And if we find something useful for us, then by all means, we can, you know, um, check it out. Certainly, there are so many beneficial methods by which we can sort of draw our own conclusions and come to some understanding. The texts, various texts that we have, those can help. But ultimately, it is about seeing the reality for myself. If somebody tells me, I have experienced this. Now, what that other person has experienced, they will try 
to tell me in words, isn't it? Some things will get lost in that. Ultimately, I have to directly see it for myself. Only then can I really say that, yes, this is true for me, isn't it? So yes. if you're looking at the truth, if you're trying to see this whole existence the way it is, then ultimately you have to see it yourself. So this is what we are trying to do here. When we say observing the self by the self. Otherwise, you know, a lot of information is given out in the first workshop itself. But how much of it are we able to grasp? How much are we able to bring in our living? How much are we able to see for ourselves? That makes all the difference. So if you ask yourself how it helps to hear somebody's experience about it. If somebody is able to experience something today, they've had some past journey behind it where they have been focusing on something and been able to see it. But we are not seeing all that. We are seeing the end point. And we want to get there quickly. But every process takes its own time, takes its own, um, you know, you, have, you have to keep making effort in a particular direction, then you can get there. So, uh, whatever process we choose, ultimately we need to be able to pay attention consistently and work with that. So this is what I would say. Clearly, you know, if your question was about the natural acceptance. Now the natural acceptance is a glimpse of this reality that is already there in us. We don't have to make effort for it. We just have to pay attention to it. It is already there. All we have to do is refer to it which we may not have been doing, but we can do it now. People have called it by various names, like the conscience, your inner self, your pure self, the voice within. So many words people use to describe this natural acceptance. But then again, if somebody says, you know, the, the voice within, now, until and unless I am able to refer to it myself within me, I will not follow what people are talking about when they say voice within, isn't it? So that is the natural acceptance, that voice within. And that is coming from the pure part of you, which is similar in everybody. So therefore, this natural acceptance is the same for all. Now, when we keep referring to the natural acceptance, when we observe our feeling, refer to our natural acceptance, keep doing this process, what is going to happen is that turmoil within, that disturbance within, in the mind, with all the contradictory thoughts, all that will start settling. When it settles, then things become clearer. There is more clarity. Just like if there is a you know, stream, or if there is a pond, you throw some mud into it. It is murky. You can't see anything. Once the mud settles down, then you can see things better within the water. Similarly, if you throw a stone in the water, you will see the ripples, no? the wave, not the ripples on the water. And that will not allow you to see deep within. But once all of them settle down, then you can see deeper into the water. So similarly, when all the contradictory thoughts and all settle down, when we are calm, we are able to see things better. So this exploration that we keep saying, referring to our feeling, I mean, seeing our feeling, referring to our natural acceptance, bringing it in line, that effort is to calm all of this disturbance within. And as you calm it down, you are able to see with more and more clarity as you keep paying attention inside. So the, you know, how much attention we are able to pay 
inside that will decide you know our progress forward and this will be different for different people because we all have so many sanskars from the past so many preconditionings from the past and how much is focused attention inside that will also vary from person to person so with all of that we will see that though the process is we may be taking the same process but um, you know how much we get out of it or where we reach with that how quickly we reach with that that may vary from person to person but ultimately we all have the potential we will eventually all get to that being able to see the reality the way it is uh you know when we don't have yet have the right understanding we are working with the natural acceptance as we keep doing this process as we become calmer and calmer as we keep exploring these higher activities within us we are able to become aware of they unfold within us as they unfold within us that you know as our competence grows we are able to see more and more and more of the subtler aspects of the reality not the gross things that we see through the eyes but subtle and more subtle and more subtle and then eventually till we are able to see the subtlest reality the space we haven't really reached to being able to see the existence the way it is so that is what we are trying to do that is the ultimate goal that we are trying to get to obviously it will take time uh, but slowly as we keep making the effort we can also see some of the changes that we have observed and some of the um what we can see also we are able to see more and more so we have to keep working with that so observing the self by the self this is what we have been doing in step 1 or now you know after having been through the seven steps we can we can try to see it that i the consciousness the self i am the one observing myself i am observing my imagination that means my desire which is associated with some feeling thought and expectation and i am trying to do this every moment without any reaction without any reaction means and the first step i am not trying to evaluate it i am not trying to change it i am not trying to stop it i am just trying to observe it the way it is this observation you are doing from the pure observer point of natural acceptance therefore as long as you are observing you are able to see clearly the feeling in the imagination now when you are trying to evaluate it when you are trying to not even evaluate i would say when you are trying to analyze it or when you are thinking about why you got this feeling you're reacting to it you're trying to change it you're trying to stop it there you may be back in the b2 block so just to be aware that if that is happening the moment you realize that now you were reacting or you were thinking about it rather than observing it the feeling you can just go back to observing and with that effort when we keep doing again and again it becomes a part of us or you can say it we become very efficient at it and then sooner and sooner we'll be able to catch it when we are slipping back into the b2 block when we are going back into the thinking the analyzing very soon we'll realize that oh we stopped observing and we are thinking or analyzing or reacting and we'll go back to observe so what are we observing 
the feeling. In the second step, we said, is this feeling that I am having natural for me or not? Is it in accordance with my human nature or not? And do I want its continuity or not? For practical purposes, one thing is, is it naturally acceptable to me or not? That question, if we ask, we can get the answer straight away. Another thing, what I would I like its continuity or not? This is another question which is very practical, which you can see. You know, of course, it is natural for me, but not conditioned. Not what I like, just what I like or I dislike, but that it is my nature, human nature, which is you know, at the level of the self, the pure self, it is similar for all. So would I like to be in that state all the time, in continuity, without a break? This will also give me a very sure way of seeing that the feeling that I'm having at this moment, is it right for me or not? Is it natural for me or not? Is it in line with my natural acceptance or not? Then in the third step, we said that with this feeling or thought that I have at this moment, am I comfortable within or uncomfortable within? Am I in harmony or in a state of contradiction? Am I in a state of happiness or in a state of unhappiness? And in fact, this may be the first thing that may strike us when we start observing the feeling. Because somewhere that disturbance bothers us. And that may draw our attention to it, to the feeling. But ultimately, we have to see all feelings. Even those feelings that are not causing disturbance within. So that we can develop our competence to see the more subtle and subtle realities as we go along. So this question that we ask, are we comfortable or uncomfortable? Are we in harmony or contradiction? Are we happy or unhappy? We find that whenever we have a feeling that is in line with the natural acceptance, whenever we have a feeling that is natural for us, we are comfortable within, we are calm, we are in harmony, we are happy. Therefore, we want its continuity. So any disturbance that is there, we can see that the disturbance is something that I'm not comfortable with. This is a state of contradiction within me. And so I don't want to continue it. This becomes very clear. And this might be drawing our attention to it, but ultimately we have to stay, keep our focus all the time because we don't just want to become uncomfortable and then note it and correct it. We want to be able to avoid it completely. We want to be able to be in harmony all the time, not have the disturbance at all because that is what bothers us. What is disturbing is the contradiction the feeling that is not naturally acceptable. So if I could have, if I could ensure the feeling within me all the time, then I would have no moment of being uncomfortable. Then in step four, we ask the question, who is deciding the feeling and the thought that I'm having at any moment, at this moment, the next moment, and every moment? Is someone else deciding it for me? Is the situation outside deciding it or am I deciding it myself? And though before we started paying attention, it may have seemed that the outside situation or somebody else is responsible for my unhappiness. The more I keep paying attention inside, it becomes clear that I'm responsible for my feeling. So I'm the one who has to bring it in line with the natural acceptance. So then in step five, we asked on what basis 
am I deciding my feeling or thought that I'm having? At this moment, the next moment, every mm -hmm. moment, moment to moment. Am I deciding this on the basis of right understanding or am I deciding it on the basis of an assumption without understanding? So now you'll see that when we say understanding, it is something very profound. When we say right understanding, it encompasses everything in this reality, everything in this existence, all the realities, the subtlest reality, everything. So you'll notice that you know we may not, we may have uncovered maybe a small aspect but we have a long way to go to be able to see the entire existence the way it is. So till we are able to see the whole picture, we cannot say that we have understood. When we see the whole picture, then we can also see that many of these assumptions that were clouding our view, that they are just assumptions, they are not the reality. It is just something that I have gathered through the outside in the form of information from somewhere, which I have started to believe without really seeing for myself. I need to see for myself. So if I have that understanding and I decide on the basis of understanding, then I will always have a feeling that is natural for me, that I can continue with. And I will have this feeling at every moment. But if I'm deciding on the basis of various assumptions or preconditionings, then some of these preconditionings may be very right also, may be in line with the natural acceptance. In that case, in those moments, when I have, you know, my feeling on the basis of this assumption, which is in line with natural acceptance, at that moment, those moments, I will be calm, I will be in harmony. But when it is some assumption which is not in line with preconditioning, there I will be disturbed. Whenever I have a feeling based on a preconditioning which is not in line with the natural acceptance, there I will be disturbed. So ultimately we have to go beyond the assumptions, beyond what we believe and see it directly for ourselves. Without that, we will never know. We can only believe or disbelieve. And every time our assumption changes, our viewpoint will change. Then in step six, we asked which feelings are the ones that are natural for us, which are the ones that are in line with the natural acceptance. And we found that it is the feeling of relationship, the feeling of harmony, the feeling of coexistence. So ultimately, I need to ensure these feelings within myself. In step seven, we try to see if we can ensure that feeling, the right feeling, the feeling of relationship, feeling of harmony, feeling of coexistence, these feelings that are naturally acceptable, can I ensure that feeling at this moment, regardless of the situation? So this, all this we have to do practically, isn't it? We may have heard it many times, but until and unless it comes in our living, we have not really understood it, we have just heard it. But we need to make effort to practice it. We need to make effort to see that 
even when somebody is shouting at me or shouting outside yeah to be able to see that the other could be shouting because they are in pain they are not shouting at me they are just shouting i only see it as if they are shouting at me because i am not able to see beyond my own preconditions and i go into so much disharmony myself because i think somebody has shouted at me so i create this disharmony within and i am the one who can come out of this disharmony not by trying to change the outside because there there is lot of uncertainty i try to force somebody to see my way to think like me to behave like me and my area of influence may be very limited but my interaction may be with many 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 people who all am i going to try to change and even when i am not interacting with them when i hear things a different view point what about then what about the disharmony in me that time so i will need to ensure that right feeling and when i do that i notice that that was not the reason for my discomfort the reason for my discomfort was my own feeling and this is very liberating that i can have the right feeling whenever i want and actually i want this all the time so i have to make effort for this at every moment and then you know the benefits the rewards also will keep coming with that we'll be able to experience right there right then the harmony within the happiness within so that was uh, just going through all the steps again if uh, now i don't see any hands raised but uh, if the questions are still there yes i have few questions <clears throat> um one is uh, i begin with one the first is like we see, uh, have step 2 and 3 where in step 2 we refer to our natural acceptance and in step 3 we actually see whether it is comfortable with whether i am comfortable with the feeling mm mm-hmm. so um, i mean uh, it almost looks um, same yes or <laughs> yes uh, yeah so uh, is there a difference in the sense that we are uh, it's kind of double checking or whether we are able to refer to our natural acceptance or uh, why why these two and three are there what is one question yeah let's address this first then we'll come okay. to the next question Sure, sure. See, these seven steps are one set of formulation of steps. Yeah. Like we were saying earlier, also. Ultimately, when we are comfortable with the steps, then we can, you know, simplify it. We can go through. Like you can say, why this step four is there every time? Because once I can see that the feeling is, you know, I am the one who is deciding. Why do I have to ask it every time? You don't, because mm-hmm. once you know it. you know it isn't it yeah yeah but initially to begin with those steps are to draw attention to that particular what is being spoken of mm. so this mm. point that you know what is your natural acceptance to be able to see that to be able mm. to refer to the natural acceptance this was in point 2 then in point 3 we are also seeing the impact of this on me mm. so this mm. thing that you know when whenever it is naturally acceptable i find i am comfortable yeah so this is one way of doing it but once i have become comfortable with this i am doing this regularly then i need not you know go through 
this whole one to four may happen very quickly within myself. Uh, and that's fine too. You can, you know, bring it down. Or even, you know, eventually it may just be that this whole exercise, it is step one and step seven. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? That mm -hmm. I'm observing, I see my feeling, and I bring it in line with my natural acceptance. That's it. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. So ultimately, we can shorten, increase, whatever, based on our own convenience. But to begin with, these steps were put down. It's not hard and fast. We can even split the first one um, into smaller steps, if we like, if we want to uh, cut it down to narrow it down to just a couple of steps. That's also fine based on our own, you know, how experience. Uh, yeah. Competence. Our own competence. competence. Yeah. yeah. So even first we can go about, you know, we can't directly access feelings. So go thoughts. I have, I have asked why get in touch with our feelings. So till we, uh, till we continue to be, uh, I mean, I accept uh, comfortable with the process and able to get yeah. in touch with the community. Yeah, that's a good thought, actually. That, yes, step one could be, you know, split up into if I'm able to observe my feeling or if I'm not able to observe my feeling. And if I'm not able to observe my feeling, then what to do? Yes. Yes. Certainly, then we would have to try to see through the thought. Thought, yeah. Now, here you are analyzing. If my thought yeah. is like this, perhaps my feeling is that way. But, yeah. you know, what but, you analyze and what you yeah. feel are two different things, isn't it? You yeah. can see that. Yeah. Yes. So what you are feeling, that is your feeling. <laughs> Do, I understand. I mean, yeah. but till we get in touch with... Yes, uh, certainly we, we can do that. Whatever we are in. So yeah. actually, and will you suggest that, uh, I mean, so... For that, uh, to begin with, spend an half an hour, 10 minutes observation through this process and writing down uh, then for another 20 minutes, uh, whatever we experience. Will that yes. be a good exercise? Like, yes. if I mean, I understand that we do it for, I mean, we should do it every moment, but to begin with, to, you know, uh, to sharpen this ability. Uh, inside us, doing it regularly, half an hour, Absolutely. 10 minutes silent. It will be very useful. And writing down sometimes gives us clarity. Like there is yes. a muddle of thoughts and we are not sure of what, you know, what we are able to see also. We are not clear sometimes whether I have seen it or not. I am doubting. So I can write things down. Sometimes that helps to give clarity. But ultimately, if I have seen something directly for myself, then I know. Then there is no doubt that I yes. have seen it. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes. yes. The, thank you, Didi. Another yes. question is, yes. um, um, so it's kind of, uh, as you say, that this is like, uh, there are layers of samskaras which hampers our ability to see. Hmm. Our and natural acceptance is a glimpse of us, the mm. real self, in some sense. Yeah. Um, are there? I mean, and this is our way to, you know, practice that um, these seven steps we practice, practice, and then we will actually be able to see ourselves bit by bit, and mm. eventually the whole self. And. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Not only the self, ultimately, you know, to get to right understanding means being able to see everything in the existence. So the self, which is a representation of Clear the consciousness unit. Yeah. The, I mean, yeah. The material, the body, which is representation of the material units and the space. All yes. three realities. And therefore, you know, these you know, the expressions of um, everything in the existence, then we'll be able to see um, yeah. all of it the way it is. 
yeah so other than that no right i mean we are we want to focus on these three and then based on whatever we uh, observe based on that try to do our work and behavior and uh, based on that refine so that's the that's we the observe problem. and we refer to the pure yeah. part the natural pure. acceptance and then again do our behavior out of that again yes. observe and refer back right i mean yes and this is a you know hands on process it goes on real time continuous real time continuous yeah. actually even now if we see yeah. all this thought process is going on within the feelings are there and then we actually express it outside and we don't express all of it also isn't it so many yeah. times we may think i should say i should call this one maybe i should say there is something yes. i may be having a feeling you know of either relationship yes. if i am having a feeling of relationship i may be thinking of saying something nice to them and all of that or if i have feeling of opposition i may be remembering some past incident being unhappy and then finding fault with the other person and all this may go on i may or may not express it outside yes. so it may not come in my behavior but still it is very significant because it is causing this harmony or disharmony within me so i need to know the details of that i need to find out what am i feeling right now and yes. you know what is naturally acceptable to me what will be the state in which i am can be in harmony yeah Isn't yeah it? yeah thank you didi and one last question kind of for now yeah is uh, can you share about your experiences <laughs> and fit in this journey i mean see i am also co exploring like everybody else so i have i don't claim to have reached anywhere i am also trying to see things the way they are and ultimately you know maybe somewhere else and i have shared in the past also but uh, more important than somebody else is sharing is what oh. actually i can experience because until and unless i can experience it it really doesn't matter isn't it yeah yeah yes yeah sure yes. yes but it starts from the very gross and yeah you, you know it changes it shifts like you have seen it yourself that you know it shifts from gross to subtle yeah i mean we can all see many things that we may have been able to see like we may have assumed that the other is responsible for my problems isn't it yeah. this feeling of trust that we talk of in the workshop so i may assume that you know the other's intention is bad that was before i really even you know had any idea about it i would always blame the other now this is a very strong assumption it is such a strong assumption that after i get the information also i have studied about the feeling of trust i have learned about it i have had the information i have reflected on it and yet sometimes again it prop you know props up isn't it yeah. now that is because yeah. my assumption is so strong it is driving my feeling when i am not aware true so that's how it is uh, you, know, you can see more and more subtle things but seeing is not enough Mm-hmm. seeing means it should be coming in our living true then i can say yes i have understood it in totality but entire existence to be able to see the way it is everything in this existence to be able to see the way it is that would be right understanding otherwise mm-hmm. we get little bits and pieces here and there true but the whole picture and- it will take yeah. time take time and actually even this seven steps is kind of while observing we have to begin with it's a it's a tool we have got right yes and it will also dissolve in some sense because even these words we have given the words actually the feeling is not i mean you 
you cannot abstract in the word yes like, ultimately you have to experience it you have to feel it. it yeah exactly yes, yes. but True. these seven steps they help yes sense. i mean yes yeah this is Completely one formulation formulation that yes. can be a way a tool to ultimately get to the more yes. and more subtle things but the whole thing is this is just a tool tool correct you need not get fixated to this the whole thing is with this tool what effort i can make myself so that i can see it for myself that should be the focus true yes thank you thank you very much thank you so we don't have much time we had one more hand raised we'll do a 5 minute observation so, so all day today we are going to go through these seven steps again and try to see them in us spend some time 20 minutes half an hour trying to do this and you know writing down your observations that will help in this process and then we'll take your observations tomorrow